halfway across the Bass Strait, we were in like, 10 minute seas. It was, it was a pretty horrendous situation. Uh, 12 people on board, 10 were seasick, myself and one of the other guys were still sailing the boat. A couple of guys who just wanted to drop off at the side, they'd had enough of life. And uh, we thought we had a crack in the mast. So that was probably the, the scariest point where you've got uh, 10 out of 12 people being sick, you're responsible for all their lives, you're responsible for the boat, you're responsible for everything and and, and uh, to make matters worse I had, I'd been, I'd supervised the building of that boat so you know if something went wrong at that point it was all on my shoulders. When an owner comes to us and says you know I'd like to buy a boat, well, the first thing we, we ask is what are you trying to do with it, how fast do you need it to go, where's it going to operate, the hardest part is making sure that we've met the customer's requirements. You know, we do have a, a saying in this business, customer is king. And when you've promised something, we need to deliver that. So the hardest part is making sure that we can deliver what we've promised. Generally speaking, they want it to go faster than anything else we've done before. They want it to carry more passengers, use less fuel. Through our technological capability, we do some modeling in CFD space. We work out what the, the vessel uh, might be able to do. We have good background boats that we can take as a starting point. We jump off that platform and we try to make something that's better than we've ever done before. I like to think about a picture that John Rothwell has on his wall, which is him as a nine-year-old building a, a little boat with a lawnmower on the back. And he went from Coogee across to Garden Island as a, a young kid. Technology advancement has, you know, he's ensured has been pushed through the business throughout the, the, the ensuing 30-odd uh, years. Making sure that we look for new ways to do things better is, is more important than just grinding out another, you know, this is the same as the last one. Our R&D team is already working on what are the next fuels, you know, will it be electric, will it be green. The other area is the automation and the autonomy, you know, at the moment we still have a lot of people on ships, operating the ships faster than we know we'll be able to do that with machines, with robots, and Austal has always been innovative in, in new technologies from steel to aluminium and then going from aluminium back to steel has brought in some of the technology advances that we just have lived on and created a business with. And as I say, it's not me, it's a team. We are all a team and we've had many different members of the team over the last 33 years, but all of them have really demonstrated that they really grouped together and through strong leadership and gelling that team is, is what's created Austal. When I'm sailing, one of the important things is to make sure that everybody is working as a team, that we, you know, everybody knows their job, they're all going to support each other to do their job as best they can. Throughout my career, I've brought that into the teams that I've worked with. The days that I see new people coming into the business who just, you can see their potential oozing as they walk in the door. The days that the boats go in the water and they all work, they're the days that, that we love. <laughs>